Here you see the 29F68, which is a Fairchild Dynamic RAM Controller IC. Notice that this IC provides two 9-bit address inputs. Inputs AC0 through AC8 are used for the column addresses, and inputs AR0 through AR8 are used for the row addresses. The input labeled NOT CS is the chip select input. The outputs are labeled Q0 through Q8 and are capable of driving up to 88 dynamic RAM devices. The MSEL is the memory select input. The MSEL input is used to select between the row and column counter contained within the IC. The input labeled LE is the latch enable input which is used to latch the row and column addresses. The select inputs are labeled SEL0 and SEL1. When the select inputs are used in conjunction with the memory select input, they are decoded to determine which row address strobe outputs and column address strobe outputs will be active. Inputs MC0 and MC1 are the memory cycle inputs. These inputs are used to control the operating mode of the IC. The next input is labeled NOT RASI, which is the row address strobe input. And NOT CASI is the column address strobe input. Pin NOT OE is the output enable. The pins labeled CAS0 through CAS3 are column address strobe outputs. And the pins labeled RAS0 through RAS3 are row address strobe outputs. The 29F68 Dynamic RAM Controller IC is designed to be used with 16K, 64K, or 256K dynamic RAMs. The two 9-bit addresses are used to store the row and column addresses provided by the processor, while the 2-bit latch from pins SEL0 and SEL1 are used to select one each of the four RAS and CAS outputs. In the refresh mode, two internal counters cycle through the refresh addresses. Only the row address is used for normal RAS only refreshing, generating up to 512 addresses to refresh a 512 cycle refresh dynamic RAM. Let's review the most recent material we have discussed. The memory cells contained within the dynamic RAM device store information as a charge on a capacitor connected to a single metal oxide semiconductor transistor. Single transistor memory cells allow more memory to be placed on one chip. Single transistor memory cells also require less power per bit. Due to the small size of the capacitor used to store the single bit of data, the dynamic RAM device must be updated frequently. This updating sequence is called the refresh cycle. The most common refresh method is the RAS only refresh. This allows one row to be refreshed at a time. The hidden refresh is another variation of the RAS only refresh cycle. The primary difference is that the data remains valid at the output. Dynamic RAM devices are available with the refresh circuitry contained within the Dynamic RAM IC. Separate Dynamic RAM controller ICs are also available. This concludes review number six. Next we will examine a mass storage system called magnetic bubble memory. One of the most promising memory devices designed in the past two decades is the magnetic bubble memory, or simply bubble memory as it is usually called. Bubble memories are so vastly different from the other semiconductor memory devices which we have previously examined that the best way to understand how they work is to discuss how they were discovered. In 1967, a scientist at Bell Telephone Laboratories discovered some very unusual effects in a thin wafer of magnetic garnet material. The thin magnetic garnet film contained magnetic domains which formed a maze-like structure. 
When a magnet was placed near the magnetic garnet material, the serpentine patterns would shrink into tiny cylinders which when viewed on end would look like bubbles. These magnetic bubbles are about 5 micrometers in diameter and tend to drift in the thin layer of garnet. Like ordinary magnets, the magnetic bubbles will tend to repel one another. Since the bubbles repel one another, they maintain a certain distance between each bubble. This makes them suitable for use in a memory system. Now that you have a basic concept of what a magnetic bubble is, let's examine how these bubbles can be used to store data. We will begin by examining how the bubble memory device is fabricated. First, a non-magnetic crystal substrate like gadolinium gallium garnet is placed in an oven. Then a film of magnetic material like yttrium iron garnet is grown epitaxially on the crystal substrate. Next, a thin layer of silicon oxide is deposited on top of the YIG layer. Then a pattern of permanent magnetic material is deposited on the silicon oxide. The pattern resembles that of a T and bar configuration. Next, the chip is sandwiched between two permanent magnets which provide a field that points the opposite way from the bubbles. This causes the bubbles to form in the garnet material. The bubbles are moved by applying an additional rotating magnetic field that is parallel to the plane of the film. The rotating field is generated by two coils perpendicular to each other carrying sine wave or triangular wave currents that are 90 degrees out of phase with each other. Bubble movement is controlled by the pattern of permanent magnetic material that was deposited on the magnetic garnet film. Now let's see how the bubble is moved. As the rotating magnetic field moves, it causes the molecules within the permanent magnetic material to align with the field. Each bubble will move to seek the nearest north pole of a segment. The T-bar configuration will keep the bubbles separated so there is only one bubble per segment. The presence of a bubble indicates a 1 and the absence of a bubble indicates a 0. Each time the field makes one complete revolution, all the bubbles will have advanced one step. As you can see, this type of memory works like a shift register whose shifting frequency is determined by the frequency of the rotating magnetic field. Bubbles can be moved at the rate of 10 million steps per second. Internally, the bubble device is organized with a major and minor loop organization. The major loop is used to control the data stored in each of the minor loops. The major loop is also used to transfer data from a minor loop into the output or to take bubbles created by the bubble generator and store them into a minor loop. The minor loops, of course, are used to store the data. To write information into the bubble device, the data is placed serially into the input pin. The input pin is connected to a special bubble generator structure contained within the IC. The bubbles are transferred in the major loop until the entire program has been loaded. At that time, the transfer input is activated, which causes special transfer gates to download the data from the major loop into a vacant minor loop area of the IC. The average data stored in a single minor loop is 640 bits. To read information placed in a bubble device, the transfer input is once again activated and the data in the selected minor loop is loaded into the major loop. Once the data is in the major loop, the bubbles are sent through the replicator section of the IC. At this point, one of two things will happen to the bubbles. If it is a destructive read operation, as shown here, the data will be read, then the bubbles will be erased by applying an opposite polarity magnetic field to the bubble in the bubble annihilator section of the device. Or if it is a non-destructive read operation, the bubbles will become stretched, then split in two by the replicator current. One bubble is then sent to the output and the other bubble is circulated in the major loop. The output contains a detector section which has sufficient sensitivity to detect the signal produced by the presence of a magnetized bubble. Bubble memories are non-volatile. 
but their size, speed, and available memory have limited their use to only a few applications. Still, their potential for storing millions of bits of data make them a viable alternative to other mass storage devices. We will now look at a brief review of our discussion of magnetic bubble memory devices. Bubble devices store data in the form of magnetic particles called bubbles which float in garnet material. The presence of a bubble indicates a 1 and the absence of a bubble indicates a 0. Bubble movement is controlled by two rotating magnetic fields that are perpendicular to one another and each carries a sine or triangular wave current which is 90 degrees out of phase. The operation of the bubble memory is very similar to a shift register whose shifting frequency is determined by the frequency of the rotating magnetic field. Internally the bubble device uses major and minor loop organizations. The major loop is used for read and write operations and minor loops are used to store the data.